Hello. Hello, Eternal Life fans. I'm going to be answering some of your questions. I have four questions because I love the number four. Ooh, the number four. The first question is by Eco Doll on YouTube. Hello, Rowan. A question for you. Are there any recent developments in life extension that excite you? Um, yeah, I'm very excited by what Liz Parrish is doing. I recently watched a few of her interviews about her gene therapy that she conducted on herself. She's basically experimenting on herself, very experimental gene therapies, to in hopes of discovering something that could end our aging and could cure aging. I just love her passion. Um, she really really cares about just helping people, you know, including herself. She just she doesn't want to die from aging or any diseases. I just love uh, here's a little clip of a um an emotional interview she did. There's a little clip it shows how invested she is this invested she is emotionally to this project. Uh, let me phrase a question. If you could do one thing in your life that could save a million lives, and maybe a billion. Would you do it? I would. <sighs> if we can eradicate most disease from the face of the planet, what is our human potential? What can we do for each other then? Uh, one of the things that stands out to me from watching her interviews is this horrible thing like that the FDA uh, is putting basically hindering and slowing down the progress because there's so much bureaucracy that's involved with you know trying to they, they stop you if you want to experiment on yourself they don't even let you try experimental therapies a lot of times so I'm really just sort of angry about that I, I don't like that, you know, there shouldn't be interference. Um, people who want to try to cure aging on themselves, they should be allowed to try whatever they want to with their own bodies. So Liz Parrish has kind of shed light on this issue for me. Current regulatory authorities have overstepped their remit and the development of medicine has become overregulated. This harms patients by slowing down medical innovation. In fact, this is one of the reasons I support Trump, because Trump is more libertarian-minded than, say, Hillary or Bernie. Um, Trump, I think, under a Trump presidency, we wouldn't really have as much bureaucracy with this kind of thing. And because um, Trump is more of a capitalist and letting the free market just kind of run wild. Uh, Peter Thiel actually recently came out as being a Trump supporter, and we know Peter Thiel wants to live forever. He has said this a lot. He's donated lots of money to SENS Foundation. So that's actually another recent development, you could say, that in uh, it's just, just uh, Peter Thiel supporting Trump. That was very exciting to me, because um, I'm a Trump supporter, and I was like, wow, Peter Thiel's supporting Trump. So, you know, it just shows that I think Peter, under, Peter Thiel understands this. He understands that we need less government, interf less government interference with life extension. And we just need to build the economy. We need the free market to just, uh, you know, capitalism. I really think that private corporations might discover the cure for aging sooner than the government would. We want a competitive market where companies are trying to compete to develop this cure for aging. And it's just time we get angry at aging. We gotta get angry about this. People are dying. This should upset us. We should be thinking about this all the time. Um, here, Charlize Theron will explain how we should be, how I'm feeling about aging, okay? Listen to this. Scared, angry, disappointed, frustrated. Question two. Uh, 
by Shurgano Mel. Uh, what are your main reasons for not voting Bernie or Hillary? Um, well, I used to support Bernie. I was kind of a kind of a socialist, and I think I've I've uh, changed completely. I've just switched around on that. Um, look, Bernie wouldn't if uh, Bernie wouldn't give tax dollars to cure aging, as far as I know. I think if Bernie were to be president, he would tax people. That money would be going to universities in my opinion, to brainwash people, to be regressive, you know, people. And that money would be going towards the medical establishment, the already established medical establishment. You know, maybe people would have free health care, but is that health care going to make them, is that health care going to cure their aging? I think the medical establishment that we have now is working towards just kind of treating the symptoms and um, that's a problem. I don't want to just treat the symptoms. We want to cure aging completely. We want to eradicate aging and therefore achieve indefinite life extension. So um, as far as like, a, I, I appreciate Bernie's compassion. I mean, he seems to be, his socialism seems to be coming from a place of wanting to be compassionate to the poor and everything. And uh, I understand that. And uh, I think under a Donald Trump presidency, presidency, it's not like we wouldn't have any welfare. I think the poor would still be taken care of. Um, maybe not to the extent that's happening right now or with a Bernie presidency, but I think that under a Donald Trump presidency, there'd be more jobs. The free market capitalism would be creating more jobs, so people would be able to support themselves easier. There'd be less bureaucracy that's stopping and preventing small businesses from starting up and, and things like that. So as far as Hillary, I don't like that she's, Ed, she's just, she's sold out to the corporations. She is sold out completely. I don't really trust her. Um, she seems to be um, voting for whatever's popular at the moment, you know, to just increase her votes. She'll go with whatever's trendy and whatever the polls are saying is most popular. I don't, I don't feel like she's a person of integrity. I feel like she's lying. And I don't like her immigration policy. She is wanting to open up the borders. In fact, uh, here are two tweets of Donald Trump that basically explain why I do not like Hillary. He said, Crooked Hillary wants a radical 500% increase in Syrian refugees. We cannot allow this. Time to get smart and protect America. Trump also tweeted, How can Crooked Hillary say she cares about women, women when she is silent on radical Islam? which horribly oppresses women. See, I feel like Hillary is a regressive in the sense that she doesn't want to really address these problems like radical Islam. She just wants to kind of gloss over it, pretend like it's not there. She's not wanting to, I mean, I hate, I don't want to have um, refugees coming into the country. I don't want a repeat scenario of what happened in Europe, what's currently happening. The next question is, um, Anonymous asked me on Tumblr, are there any unhealthy foods that you miss? Uh, yeah, I, I miss salmon. I, that was one of the first, uh, that was the last meat that I consumed. It was salmon, fish. But I gave it up because I thought it was too high in mercury and other contaminants and I just didn't want to mess around with that stuff. And um, coffee I was the last thing I gave up that I kind of miss. I gave it up because it's very high in acrylamides, which is basically when it's, you know how coffee's brown? It's because it's kind of, it's that browning reaction. It's like a Millard reaction and it creates acrylamides. 
and it kind of ages your body faster. So I'm afraid of coffee for that reason. Um, yeah. So I gave up coffee. But you know, a good hot chocolate tastes good too. So you don't need, I don't need coffee. And um, it's important to make sacrifices. You know, it's important to sacrifice things for the sake of your longevity, for the sake of eternal life. Um, every Any sacrifice would be worth it. If anything's even slightly risky, it's not worth it, right? I mean, this is your eternal life. This is everything. If you don't have eternal life, if, if you don't have your life, you literally have nothing. So make sacrifices. It's good. Okay. Um... Brad Arnold asks on Facebook, when did your morbid fear of death begin and what circumstances surrounded its emergence? I'm not being hostile or critical, but I'm just curious. My fear of death began when I was just young. I, as soon as I learned about death, really, I started to fear going to sleep. I thought that I would I could die in my sleep, and um, that was horrible. But um, when I was young, I did have kind of a comfort with the afterlife. I was raised Christian, I believed in the afterlife, but I never felt like I knew that I was going to go there. So I was always scared of death, that either I would cease to exist or that I would go to hell. Now, um, I don't believe in the afterlife. I'm an atheist, so my fear of death has intensified. Um, but, you know, fear of death is just completely rational. And it is a childlike thing, because more children are deeply afraid of death, I think, than adults. Because as we get older, we kind of brainwash ourselves and develop ways to cope with death and kind of delude ourselves so that we don't have to acknowledge the truth of death and because uh, people don't want to fear. Now, fear in our culture is demonized but fear is like a mechanism of our survival instinct. Fear totally helps us survive. I've said that fear is my superpower. I still I still feel that way. Um, I just hate that our culture is against fear. They even use fear as a as a way to attack Donald Trump, you know, because they say, oh, Donald Trump is just making, is just playing into the fear, right? He's using fear to get votes. Well, there's real things to fear in this world. So I don't like this, this anti-fear rhetoric that we hear. And, you know, here's a, a little clip of George Clooney with his little anti-fear thing, basically trying to make Trump look bad because of that Trump is playing on fear. Well, fear is freaking awesome. There's not gonna be a President Donald Trump. <laughs> um, that's not gonna happen. Uh, and it's not gonna happen because we're not gonna be used, fear is not gonna be something that we're gonna, uh, that's gonna be, uh, what drives our country. We're not gonna be scared of Muslims or, or, or immigrants or, you know, women. And this is another pattern that I see. The regressive left does not want us to fear anything. The, the regressive left wants to ignore problems, right? Instead of solving problems, they'll just act like the problems don't exist. And then that way they'll just avoid the problems. That's not how it works. Like to solve problems, we need to identify the problems, be honest about the problems, and I think fear, fear the problems. Death is a problem. Aging is a problem. Let's fear it. You know, if you haven't had like a existential crisis, I would say, try to have one. I hope my videos in give give that reaction to people. I want people to watch my videos and have an existential crisis. I want them to be thinking about death and these horrible things so they'll be inspired to do something about it. 
Um, you know, once you realize something that's helped me in life is realizing that if you don't live forever, then your life is meaningless. Death really does remove all the meaning of life because you end up with nothing. And so, what was the point? I keep on asking that same question and I've never gotten a good answer. What is the point to a life that ends? It seems to me that a temporary existence is meaningless and I've never found a way to to say otherwise. And um, this is why a survival, survival of the individual, your own survival, my own survival, survival is the most important thing. If your life were a song, what would the title be? I will survive. You have to survive. Otherwise, you cannot experience anything in life. Everything that we enjoy doing, our habits, our hobbies, the pleasures, everything. You don't get to experience that if you're dead. That's a problem. It's a big problem. That is the conclusion of this question and answers, and uh, I'll try to do more of these. Uh, if you have a question, ask it below. And um, if you've already asked a question, I'll probably I'll get to your question eventually. Um, if not in text, I'll put it in a video like this. But um, living forever is possible. You have to believe it. Have hope. Never give up. It's too important to give up on. So you have to try your hardest. Never stop working on your strategy. Never stop perfecting your strategy. There's always more we could do. We study and learn and um, ultimately just be like a kind of a, a perfectionist, I think. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.